How's it going? Fox back again. Something different today. I'm going to do a bit of a, a lesson, give you a glimpse of what sort of stuff you can get. If you do have private lessons from me, I'm going to teach you how to make a respace. Uh, not only am I going to teach you how to make it, I'm going to talk a bit about the theory behind it. So to start with, I'm going to say if you enjoy this, please subscribe to my channel, um, Sound Design Tutorial slash Outbreak Audio. Uh, there's a link in the description to my Facebook Google Plus and new Twitter page which will be blended in with Outbreak Audio our website. When live it will be outbreakaudio.com. So what is a respace? In its most basic form you could say that. Um, here's one I made for a pack my EDM, EDM Essentials pack. I've got one in there called D and Reese. This one's a lot more gritty, it's got some effects and stuff, but still the same effect. What do you think of when you think of a reese? You think of that pulsing, that beating, or that phase cancellation. Um, what is phase cancellation? Right, this is going to be good. And uh, if we initialize this, if we get two oscillators the same. Phase cancellation is when the peak of one waveform clashes with the trough of another, exactly cancelling each other out. A good way to visualize that is if we resample this in quickly. Right, I've just uh, recorded in a real basic saw wave there. It's the two saw waves together, but they're not detuned at all, so it's just going to look like one saw wave. It's going to look like some funky analog goodness if we zoom in. Da -da. So what is a peak and what is a trough? Uh, when you think of a waveform in its entirety, it's just an upward spike of volume and a downward spike of volume. This is the positive spike, zero crossing that's called, where it intersects 0 dB. This line is no volume whatsoever. So this is the volume of the saw wave going up. If we zoom in even more, you'll see it's, it's got some little artifacts. It's not just a dead straight line. So yeah. This is called your peak, this is called your trough. Your peak is anything above 0 dB and your trough is anything below 0 dB. So what is fade cancellation is when a peak of one waveform intersects with the trough of another. Uh, I can show you that simply by making a basic Reese. Just by offsetting this one in pitch slightly, you'll be able to hear it straight away. <laughs> Can you hear that pulsing? Bum, 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 bum. If I record that in now. If I record that in now. You knobhead. Go away. Right now, if we look at this clip, you're going to be able to visually see what's going on. You can see that beat in there. That doo -doo 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 -doo. So what's going on? This is the bit we want to be interested in. This zero point here. So what you can see, you can visibly see two saw waves interacting with each other there. There's one, there's the other one being cut off by the peak in the trough. There's another one. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where it's almost two visible saw waves. And then it goes the other way. It's going to start getting smaller and smaller and smaller again until it comes to the point at zero crossing where the peak of one hits the trough of another. And it's at this exact point here where the volume cuts out, where they crash over on this zero point here. So the peak of the one is it in the trough of the other and it absolutely cancels it itself out. Another way that I could show you that visually 
is by drawing two saw waves, one with an opposite phase from the other. So that is a saw wave going up. Uh, if we reset the fine on that, if we draw a saw wave going down the other way, we're going to be able to turn this volume of this saw wave off altogether. Um, listen to this. This is going to twist your mind a bit. It's already doing it because the phase is on zero. Right, I need to set two separate phases there, the starting point. Um, as I push this phase around, it's going to go from two saw waves starting at the same point to a point where the peaks come in because they're on the same volume to a point where the peaks and the troughs clash exactly at the same time the whole way through the sound that it's going to just turn the sound off. So when I get to 180 degrees, you're not going to hear anything. Sound's going to get thinner and thinner and thinner. My finger's still held down. You can hear nothing. You can see MIDI going in. You can see it affecting it, but no sound coming out. As I push the phase the other way, actually, we'll record this in, and then you'll be able to see again visually what's going on. Very cool. Let's delete that. Let's Sounds like a square wave when you do this inverted, um, these two inverted saw waves. So we're going to record it in and we're going to play with that phase so it cancels it out so then we can visualise what's going on. Should have done that a bit better. Let's delete that. Let's duplicate you. Let's make it a bit longer so we can do a slower sweep so it's going to be easier for us to visualize what's going on. We're still talking about phase cancellation here. I'm going to explain how we get it and transfer it to a respace in a bit. Phase cancellation. Right, let's record this in again. Quicker. Let's try it one more time. Right. So you can see it makes us a square wave when we do these two inverted uh, sawtooths. So it's easier to visualise actually. The peak of one square is hitting the trough of another. You can see here ever so slightly, this is the stereo spectrum obviously, as we move along. You can see them pushing up towards the zero crossing point, higher and higher and higher and higher. This is where we get to the point where all the fun stuff happens. can see the volumes getting quieter and quieter and quieter as they cancel each other out where they intersect this point where there is absolutely nothing no peaks no troughs and it comes out the other way starts getting louder and louder and louder well I hope that's given you a bit of understanding about phase cancellation and how you can use that to make some sort of rhythmic parts in your respace so we're going to utilize that phase cancellation by detuning the waves slightly rather than doing it modulating a phase like that um, the best way to do it is to just detune one from the other. That's how you get that rhythmical sort of beating that increases as you go up the volume. Um, the reason that happens is because higher pitched sounds play at a faster rate, which means if you just have two oscillators on the same, uh, exactly the same pitch, with no detuning whatsoever, you won't get any beating, obviously. Let's just change this to basic shapes. Analog basic shapes. Square wave. Square wave. If you have two oscillators that are exactly the same phase, 
exactly the same semitone, exactly the same octave, and play them together. They just play in unison. It's just just increases the volume. If we play one slightly faster, that means more peaks and more troughs are cramming into the same sort of area than the one that is going slower. At certain points, they're going to overtake the slower one and going to cancel it out, which gives us that sort of beating. Um, you can do that by adding extra voices in unison and using the detune knob. So if we play one note. Very, very easy to hear when you do it that way. The, the less amount of detune or the closer they are together in pitch, the slower the modulation that you get. And that classic wreath, um, as you play a higher note, it goes faster. You're going to hear it getting slower as I come down the notes. The beating that is the phase cancellation. So very, very easy to hear when you use uh, square waves, but I prefer to use triangles and signs and other things like that. You can even use two separate waveforms. We'll go back to that DM Reese patch again that I had in my EDM Essentials pack. That's really low, that is. Let's turn distortion off. Turn everything off. Um, you don't have to use the same waves forms. They still all have peaks and troughs. Um, it helps if you keep them on the same bass octave and then do detuning as and when you need it. See what I've got here. I've got a detune of 0 0.9. Detune, that should have been 0 0.9 as well. 0 0.09. I've actually done it in the fine tune box rather than the detune. So the triangle wave is overtaking the sort the sine wave. That's when you get the cancellation out when the two waves aren't playing at exactly the same time and you get that the beating effect. Again if I increase the amount of D tune it'll go faster. Uh, common for a Reese bass is some mono glide as well, some legato. I'll tell you what I'll do. Now I've talked you through the theory of it all. Um, it, it's real straightforward when you get to grips. You, you just got to think of uh, if a peak and a trough of a waveform clash, it's going to give you no vo no, vo no volume, and it's that them little points as the uh, sustained notes are held down that give you that beating, that sort of pumping effect so let me open a quick track that I did a little while ago for a remix section um, we'll bring up the DM Reese patch in that I believe I modulated it and changed it around a bit and we'll talk through step by step just so you've got a, a Reese to pick apart and use for yourself So the basic theory behind it, as I keep saying, is phase cancellation. Uh, one waveform cancels out the other waveform at certain points when played at different notes, which gives you that beating effect. So let's listen to this patch in context with a whole track. What have we got here? <laughs> If you have the detuning very slight then the pulsing can be really really slow which it is in this one so we'll recreate this patch for you this DM Reese as I say it is virtually the same as the one that I just bought up but I believed I changed certain things uh, we've got no processing on the channel itself apart from some basic EQing 
I will pull that out and I will I will do away the side chain in you can hear that glide as well that's classic Reese um, in my eyes every Reese bass should have some glide helps mingle the two notes together as they overlap right let's duplicate this which one are you? Uh, that's what I'm going to be making it on. So, yeah, let's go ahead and initialize this and we'll start from scratch. So, oscillator worm was an analog basic shape. I had it on a sine wave. I pitch it down one octave to give us a real low feel. Oscillator B, as I say, was a triangle wave. You don't have to use saw waves. Most common are saw waves or square waves, but in the context of this track, I use a lot of distortion to fizz it up as well. So this is two octaves down. Um, we're going to give this two voices a unison, both of them. No, they were both down on 0 0.09. So giving us a bit of stereo width, but again, they're on exactly the same pitch get a tiny bit of movement and then we're going to change this fine to 38 you can hear that beating I'll tell you what let's switch it up actually let's just make a classic one let's change it both to a saw wave we'll have one one octave lower We use the sub as a, as a sub to give us the low element that we wanted, so we'll pitch that down two. Clipping, sorry. Let me turn off the bass group. Not the bass group. Let me turn off the compression and the cueing on the bass group so we can hear it that's more like it so yeah the slower the fine detune amount or let's pull this to zero actually and we'll actually do it on the detune knob got movement there have I moved the blend or something just because we've got three voices unison so yeah let's keep them both on two so two ways of doing it inside serum we can actually use the detune itself or do the fine tune I personally do actually like to do it in the fine itself. It's much more stable, you don't get the extra stereo width that you get from using the detune on the new unison voices. So half a cent uh, is good to me, half a semitone, sorry, 50, 50 or so cents. We've got both of these on the same octave, two voices unison just to increase the volume, uh, and a sub oscillator giving us some beef. We are now going to bring in a basic low pass filter. We're going to drive it and fatten it up to give us some lovely distortion. Watch for clipping. You can really hear that beating now. If you want to add a bit of extra movement, um, you can have a, an LFO on a quarter rate and just flick the low pass filter out a bit. Remember that's going to be a static modulation and it's not going to go with the beating of the Reese if you get what I mean. So I'll do sometimes do that but for this instance we won't, we'll just keep it nice and rounded. What 
what else will we do? Um, you just leave the envelope wide open. You definitely don't want any release. Uh, this mono legato is where we're going to bring in some lovely glides. So we're going to want legato. We change it to always. The notes are not going to have to overlap. As we bring in some portamento. That's a beast of a bass already. Uh, hyperdimension I generally wouldn't use, the distortion I would. The diode one I normally use, it's my favourite inside serum, it's very severe, but for now we're just going to use the tube. Might even use a pre in a band pass. Too much glide there, let's turn that down a bit. Because we've done a bit of pre EQing on the distortion, we're just going to boost the lows again. Maybe even add a peak in the mid sort of area. Dread race, what a bass. Bit of more band compression on the end, maybe. happy with the pulsing and the beating obviously all you got to do is increase increase the There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how to make a Reese, a DMB Reese bass uh, and a bit of theory behind the beating and how you get that pulsing sound. Um yeah, not much else to it. You can do whatever you want, as I say, change change one to a triangle wave. You're still gonna get the beat in. Even a square wave. Have it. DMB Respace. Uh, yeah, please subscribe if you enjoyed this or any of my other tutorials. Many more to come. I'm going to be doing a lot more of this, so I'll give you a snippet into uh, what sort of things you can get out of some private lessons with me. I'm going to talk about um, the basics behind a pad on the next one. But yeah, for now, that has been me, Fox, for Sound Design Tutorials 8 Break Audio. Please subscribe. See you later. Ta da. Bye.